How's this for prodigal? Let's let's just do the big stuff straight up. Eight Please. tests. After eight tests, average of 48.41. Let's just round that up, 50. Not bad. The average is 50 after eight tests. Uh, and a high score of 267. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, equally important is the this guy played a season of Sydney grade cricket. Yeah. Uh, Smashed him as well. Yeah. So a good player. 760 runs at 65. Yeah. Um, we've been about as forensic as it gets, as it gets uh, when it comes to investigating his time uh, in grade cricket, uh, and we look forward to learning about it uh, with him on the line. I'm talking about Zach Crawley. Uh, Zach, welcome to the Grade Cricketer Podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Uh, Zach, I, I want to start with a quote from a teammate of yours at Sydney Tigers. Um, so we sort of went sniffing around uh, about you. And he said, okay. uh, it was where you played. Uh, and he said, unfortunately, Zach was one of the few poms that came to Australia to improve his cricket and not drink for six months. So there's not too much on him. Mm. So you're probably feeling pretty good about that. <laughs> um, we did manage to learn a little bit about you. But before we lift the lid, uh, how, how was your experience of Sydney grade cricket, which we call Sydney test cricket, um, with great insecurity? <laughs> Um, and uh, to what extent was Sydney Grey Cricket the reason for your uh, for the excellent start to your test career? Yeah, I reckon it's probably 80, 90 percent. I mean, it was um, <laughs> you know it's proper cricket. You know, they uh, you know as good as our first class over here as they like to think anyway. And um, you know, you certainly get shirts uh, way more than you're going to get shirts in test cricket. So I mean, I could it's, it's about as good a preparation as I could ask for, really. It's funny you say that. We talked to uh, Sam Billings a couple of weeks ago. Called Bilbo. Bilbo. Call, call him Bilbo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he didn't invite us to call him. Bilbo. That, no, didn't we know. did anyway. No. Um, he made a similar comment I picked up where he's like, yeah, you know, a, lot of, a lot of people there like to think that the, the level's quite high. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, we stopped playing a long time ago and we still talk about it as well. Like, like what, is the, what is the chat among, uh, you know, the worldy English cricketers who do spend some time playing grade cricket? I mean, because you're clearly better than all the players who play grade cricket. Mm. You know, what, what's your observation of, like, the insecurity of Sydney grade cricketers? <laughs> no, it's not that. I think they just back themselves. I think they're like most Aussies, really, which is class. That's one of the good things about you, boys, <laughs> is that you back yourself in any situation, really, and I think that's the same with uh, Aussie grade cricketers. I mean, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll ask you, um, you know, is it, is it the club on an overseas next year? And you're thinking they're talking about my club, like, in my like, local village club. And um, they'll be like, no, no, it's all about Ken. And we're like, well, we kind of got, you know, Matt Henry coming from New Zealand to play mm. for us. You know, I'm not sure you're going to get in. Mm. But, um, the, you know, it's, um, they're good lads, though. I mean, I enjoy the way they go about their cricket. They, uh, they back themselves, that's for sure. Mm. I think Matt Henry bowls second change uh, yeah. in great cricket. So twos. Yeah, he <laughs> 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 twos, yeah. No, it's like, I want to I get into, it's like, so probably worldy territory here because, like, in terms of Sam said in the intro there, Pezzy Lad said in the intro there, just, um, you know, proper, like, you know, just knew you were going to make it from an early age. But I want to know, like, at what age did you know you were going to make it? Because you, I think, am I right in saying you got your first Kent's contract at 17, obviously playing test cricket at 22, you got your first double hundred at the age of 22, uh, much, much earlier than I ever did. Um, but, I mean, like, at what, at what age? Uh, I'm still waiting for mine, actually. Yeah. <laughs> just still waiting for my chance just trying to get through third grade. Yeah. Um, but, like, uh, you know, at what age did you think, um, I reckon I can probably make it, make a run of it, uh, professional cricket here, where you're, like, eight, nine? Like, yeah. what what age were you? Four. Yeah, four. Oh, yeah, four. <laughs> no, probably around when I was, like, 13, 14, I started taking it quite seriously with, you know, with the goal that it was, I had a good chance. Mm. Um, but, you know, it never... I didn't feel like, even when I got my first contract. I thought I didn't. I wasn't expecting it. I thought I was going to have another year um, playing twos cricket and things like that. But um, mm. so everything kind of came. It always comes a bit earlier than you expect it. But you know, it was my goal mm. from the age of thirteen, fourteen to to give it a good crack. And I knew that if I did, you know, throw my eggs and all in that basket, that I had a good chance. So mm. yeah, it was probably around that age. But uh, mm. you know, I never knew until until it happened, really. Because I did the same thing at the same age, and now I do a podcast uh, with my friend. <laughs> so, you know, different, different crew treasures. Now, I want to ask you about, because um, after you got your 267, obviously, against Pakistan just recently, Rob Key was um, on Sky with NASA. And I'll say NASA like he's my friend. Mm. Um, never met him. And <laughs> never, never met him. And there was, there was heaps of footage there of you, like, getting, like, just netting from the age of, yeah, about 13, 14, all going through, like, the, the Kent uh, Academy system and stuff. I mean, just, like, getting balls endlessly thrown at you. I mean, how many balls would you hit in a session now? Because I reckon, like, a guy like Steve Smith, for instance, might get, you know, two million. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It depends on how well you're in the game. But, I mean, mm. I don't know, maybe 500, some of that? Maybe, yeah, something like that virus. I yeah. reckon something like that. Mm. I mean, it's tough to say. We were trying to work out the other day in terms of how many balls Joe Root hit in his career. Mm. And I reckon it must be around a million. Oh um, so we were done, so we talked down all these games and practice. So, I mean, yeah, he had all those up. I mean, he loved hitting balls, Joe, to be fair. And that's probably why he's the best. 
Because when you're hitting that many balls now, like you, you might do the thing like all great cricketers do, Zach, in terms of if you just slightly miss time one, you might yell out in anguish being, you know, might, might let a little four letter word hanging out. Just let people know that you usually middle those. But yeah. you must, if you hit 500 balls in a session, right, and you middle 480, are you yelling out that you missed time to 20? Yeah. Just let people know. Let people know. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And <laughs> you've got to make sure you let everyone know that, you know, that you're smoking them. And then, so you know, and then. Yeah. Just they, they know where they are when you, where, where you're hitting them and that and and also when you get out you'll make sure that you, you know you have a big laugh in the change room so they know you care quite a bit yeah. <laughs> um, you know yeah. and you miss out on a double hundred there when you get out to ten. Yeah. This guy hasn't got anger management problems. He just cares. He just cares. Yeah, he just cares. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, he just cares more than everyone. Well, let's stick with Greg here. Um, Zach, uh, probably for eighty percent of this show, which is quite disrespectful, but anyway, um, you're you're the owner. You're the owner of the fastest 100 in Sydney Premier Cricket history, I read, um, including all levels. So, so that's a competition of Trumper, Bradman, Miller, The Wars, Richard Cheekwee, Ian Moran and Ian Higgins. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so on this day against Sutherland, who we hit this ton, who had Steve Smith playing, um, he was on a band, yeah. some might remember, um, yeah. you made 100 off 42 balls and according to a few of your teammates, you slog swept Ben Dwarshus into the tree there many, many times. Um, what, do, what, what do you remember about that fixture? Um, I remember uh, coming in and um, hitting Smith over his head and I said, keep it there, smudge your hand, um, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> <and> then, um... <laughs> <laughs> no, it was uh, it was one of those freak days, first where I just um, everything I tried came off, and it was a real short boundary. And um, Dorchus was getting so annoyed with me because, like you said, I was I was trying to hit these sweeps, and they, I was like splicing them for six. Um, but uh, no, it was, uh, it was, it was a good day. I, yeah. I ended up dropping the game though later on. That's my residing memory of that game. I dropped Dorchus later that game on there. They needed like twenty off nine balls, uh, and he that's a shame. smoked this one in the air. Yeah, but you know, like you know, I'll, t- I'll take the hundred in the last day. So. Well, thank you. Well yeah, done. Thank yeah. you. That's good yeah. bingo. Tick that off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was hoping you would mention that you lost. Just like the jokes. I was gonna, I was gonna follow up with that yeah, because you, you dropped one Sutherland chase two hundred and one. Um, so just against the, just, just a few other contra- controversies during your time here. Um, lots of the guys we spoke to, <laughs> they said Zach is a fantastic young man, probably future England captain. He barely circuited. In fact, one said I think he would succeed in a biosecure bubble because he's not big on the circuit. Um, so, so the reputation is of an upstanding, well-behaved gentleman who dominated Sydney Pretenders. Um, and yet, I've come across a controversy in, involving a catch on the road. Oh, here we go. Um, I've, I've, been, oh, wow. I've been given a picture, um, which we'll put up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I've seen the picture. Uh, the mm-hmm. person in the picture appears to be you, Zach. Yeah. Um, yeah. Holding a ball, your foot's on the rope, yeah. ball's in hand. The guy you dismissed was on 100 plus. I'm told he missed a state contract because of it. Um, <laughs> I mean, how, Changed his life. how Changed good his did life. it feel like, to just discard decency and morals and just claim oh, it? Very Australian. And did you correctly and immediately let your teammates know when yeah. in the huddle that yeah. you were claiming it yeah. despite your foot being on the road? Like, how good did yes. that feel? Yes. A hundred percent. I mean, especially because he was on a hundred, and I thought there's no chance of letting him bat on after two. Because it was a ball before two, and I thought no chance. I thought, and um, I knew the camera was on me, and I thought I'd step on the rope and just to make it just made, let him know. <laughs> Do you see? I see what you're doing there because I know you've spoken public about this. Yeah, I didn't know my foot was on the rope, and yeah. other teammates have come in to Whoops, defend you yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. You're not, you're a nice person, mm-hmm. but we all know deep down, like deep you would have, you would have, you would have felt that rope on your foot as yeah, you, you took the ball. It. You felt it. <laughs> <your feet. laughs> Oh dear! To be honest, if you look at that photo again, you'll see a bird yeah. right below yeah. my foot—an actual flying bird, which yeah, is actually, not yeah. a woman. No, 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 which is a remarkable coincidence, and I'm I'm calling foul play on that. Someone's photoshopped that and like put that bird in there because my foot's never been on the road. <laughs> That's right, foul play. I like it. It's a deep fake. Absolutely, yeah, it's a deep fake. Well, I'm looking forward oh, to that. Definitely t- yeah. fake. I'm looking forward to that turning up uh, during the Ashes if there's a contro- controversy there. We'll talk about the Ashes in a sec. Um, I just just one more thing, just from from grade cricket. Um, I was just meant to ask, century at Manly Oval. I meant to ask you about abuse you copped from a Manly bowler while you were on 120 at the time and continuing to launch him into the tennis court. So that ring a bell, or is that just was that just most Saturdays? <laughs> That was actually the other um, county cricketer, uh, Steve Eskenazi. I was kind of in the middle of it, but it was mainly between those two. Right. Um, but uh, actually, he was the one mainly copping it. Out. They both had a few choice words, and I thought I'd chime in with the odd one. But um, I, I was kind of the, the third wheeler in that in that um, 
in that one. But you know, I definitely caught my fair share on the Saturdays, that's for sure. So I actually haven't clocked until now, and now I realise you're failing to name who that bowler was. But as I think about it and put it together, just just cough if it was Steve O'Keefe. Keith, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> I genuinely hadn't thought about that till yeah. now. Great friend of the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he's here on the line right yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you, I want to ask you that because obviously there's a couple of guys in the England setup at the moment. I'm thinking Ollie Pope and uh, your Kent uh, teammate, Joe Denley, have also played in Sydney Great Cricket. And do you guys ever talk about great cricket and, and just even in, in the sense of like, what the fuck was that about? Or is it just like, yeah, what's wrong with those blokes? Or is it kind of a thing of like, oh, that was actually quite good fun and, you know, kind of, um, you know, excelled my cricket in some capacity. Please lie. No, it's definitely, it's a bit of both. We have a laugh about, um, like what we said earlier, about um, the Aussies asking to come over and play county cricket and, you know, they don't rate county cricket. We have a laugh about that. But in in all seriousness, we, uh, no, it's it's, it's a massive um, benefit. And we always tell, like, young lads coming through as well, you got to get yourself out there and do it because, you know, it's just that competitive, cricket you get you know instead of being sit at, sit at home in the freezing cold over here you mm. go out and play over there and mm. it's just quality for your cricket it's no surprise people who go across come back and have good years mm. um, so now we, we do have a laugh at, uh, a laugh at a joke about it but in all seriousness it's, it's, it's top draw because when you say they're like you, you tell the young, the young lads, you're yeah. 22. So that yeah. actually leads into my next question because at the beginning of the summer, obviously Stuart Broad was dropped um, from the England setup, and I want to know what you said to Stuart. Did you get your arm around him? Is it like, don't worry, young lad, like you know, you come back from this? Did you sort of get an arm around? Like what? Yeah. What, 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 did you, what did you say when Stuart when he was having I actually convulsions? think we just need to try a bit of pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going for with Narcher and yeah, we're going for the Gabba in 2021. <laughs> Yeah, well, I can't believe he got dropped. He castled me about 10 times before the game, <laughs> the day before, and I thought. I was like, this is surely, this, well, this is remarkable. And then, um, and then he didn't get picked. I was like, well, geez, that must show you what well, kind of nick I'm in if he didn't get picked. <laughs> um, I was out about 15 times. But, um, but yeah, no, he's, uh, no, there was no, no, no word to do it. He's, um, he's got enough experience. <laughs> yeah. I saw, you know, the, the, the question that's lingering out there when you say, you know, oh, look, I should invite the other, you know, I should invite the young guys to go along mm. is that like you've probably graduated from Sydney Grade Cricket graduated. now and, and that's probably what 267 test runs does probably. for a person. Yeah. I, I probably don't need to go back to live in a, an apartment in Dremoyne <laughs> <laughs> and go to PJs. <laughs> But um, what, I mean, tell, tell us, Zach, like what you know? There, there was, I mean, it's more than a breakthrough innings. It was, a, it was a record-breaking innings. Like, what, what, what does that do for the mentality, you know, of a, of a twenty-two-year-old? You know, like where, where does that leave you? Um, are you putting any kind of caveats on it? Oh, I was mm. in the bubble. It's a weird time. No one was there. Or, or, or are you really taking it on as like you know a, a major, major achievement? I am Jesus now. I am Jesus. And <laughs> uh, but, but do, do, you, do you feel like it elevates your status as a? Test cricketer, albeit a very new one. Yeah, no doubt. I think you know it's definitely given me a lot more confidence. I mean, it's up to other people to see how much, uh, or say how much it's um, put me on the you know risen me as a test, uh, test cricketer, so to speak. But um, you know, it's definitely given me a lot more confidence. You know, you, I was kind of my first class record wasn't great um, being picked for England, uh, and you know, so you kind of stand there thinking, what do these boys think? I'm absolutely useless. Um, so it's quite nice to, to score a couple of runs and then uh, you know to show some people that you, that you can play a little bit. But um, but no, I suppose I've done people and hopefully you know I can build it from here. You know I don't want to, I don't want to be a, a one-off. Hopefully I can get a few more. Mm. I mentioned mentioned earlier there. Obviously your mentor was Rob Key, who's spoken glowingly about your performance, especially like just just harping on the, the two sixty-seven, and we'll be harping on as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just sort of banging on about that. But um, I, I saw um during that innings when you went past Rob Key's two twenty-one, which is Rob Key's um only test hundred test hundred, but also his highest score in the test game. And then when you went past there, when you went past Rob Key's score, the big smile on your face, great achievement for you personally. And then through the stump marks, the Pakistani playing players were saying, "Who's Roby Key?" <laughs> so does that diminish the innings in any way? Oh, I suppose so, a little bit. It was a remarkable <laughs> moment, actually, because I was like, I knew what was going on, obviously. I was like, bang, get 2-2-2, two, 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 big smile on my face. But everyone actually, there was a big roar around the crowd, even there was like 10 people in there, mm. but all the lads in the changing room started calling out, all the Pakistanis started clapping, and it was quite a big moment, really. So mm. it, was, uh, it, was, it was funny. I could actually see him up in the comedy box. He was shaking his head. He, couldn't, he, he didn't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> You were saying earlier there, because um, I think a fair comparison would be with um, same in Australia as Manus Labuskakni, who had a, a relatively similar 
um, first class record in terms of averaging sort of mid thirties, uh, and then come into the test setup and has obviously really excelled, uh, excelled amazingly so very quickly as well. And then you've done the same thing, and also then you've, now you've gone back to playing for Kent and you scored a hundred and eight or fifty four balls in the Vitality Bars. You got a hundred as well against Hampshire at the Rose Bowls at uh, the AGS Bowl. Rather, I mean, like, have you just figured out that county cricket? Oh, I'm just way better than this now. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. definitely not. You never take for granted. Of course yeah. not. Just but say the, yes. Um, say yes. It, just say yes. Yeah. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, couple of people hanging out for this question, Zach, uh, based on comments you know that were made on this podcast a few weeks ago. But j- just give me a little bit of space here. So you're you're actually the tallest batsman to make a double hundred for England. Obviously, people think he's shouting into their microphones, oh, Tony Gregg was six foot six, but his high score is 148. Sure. Um, yep. Here in Australia, Zach, as you know, like we get very specific about not just scoring runs, but scoring the right type of runs. You know, like someone may objectively score lots of runs, but if they don't adhere to our very narrow aesthetic requirements, we'll treat them with suspicion until they're distrusted into oblivion, right? right? So let me give you a theory. Right. For example... Uh, we like our batsmen short and diminutive, you know, low centre of gravity, balanced, compact, you know, think Bradman, Boone, Ponting, overseas, Tendilka, Lara, etc. You see yeah. where it's going. Um, so we'll inherently accept these batsmen because they look the way we think batsmen should look, right? I'm halfway through. Um, so, so if they're t- in Australia, right, this is a theory, if they're tall, then they need to match that height with Hulk. So they... <laughs> <laughs> they need to be thick, you know, like Hayden, Peterson. So, thick, yeah, like, yes. are you prepared for the fact that when you come to Australia for the Ashes next year, and let's for the sake of argument presume you will, um, no amount of runs you score will earn the respect of Australians unless you become thick. Um, and with that in mind, do you have sympathy for the thesis that some may believe tall runs will always be weird runs? Yeah, 100%. And, you know, I'm trying my best. You know, lucky, luckily we had Stoinis over here last year, 2020, and he was, you know, he was taking me to the gym, and we were doing some some good chess work. But oh, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to stick it out, and you know, try and be respected by the Aussies over there for sure. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, man. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's well. Yeah. Well, I mean, just 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 on that, Zach, because um, obviously you have uh, England's supposed to have Sri Lanka in January, I think it is, and then then you're supposed to go to the Indian tour. All things being well. But would it be fair to say that uh, that the Ashes is on the mind? I'm talking about you personally as well. Like, you know, the Ashes is what to uh, be 12, 14 months away now, Pez. That'd be about right. I mean, is is, it, is that the goal right now? Well, I mean, you know, like like you said, there's a lot of tests between there. But obviously, sure. I'd be lying if I was in the back of my mind. Like, um, it'd be you know, if I, if I have a good year, I might have to get on that tour. I mean, that'd be what every cricketer wants from England, or Australia. So yeah. you know, I'd be lying if I was if I didn't say it's back of my mind. But um. You know, like I say, you've got some tough doors coming up in, in away in India. So, um, mm. well, and Sri Lanka, obviously. So, um, I hope that I can do all right in those first and get myself on that tour. Mm. Yeah, but you'll 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 be here. I mean, you know, what a two six. You can dine out on two sixty seven for about two years. I've always I think, said for that. Sure. We've yeah. always said that's about yeah. two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and and because you'll face some scrutiny when you come out, Zach, it's kind of more of a warm-up, you know. So, like, I know you're a big listener of the show. Um, <laughs> you know, like, like we, we are a show that covers the dark world of amateur cricket, which naturally means we spend 50% of the show discussing dad stuff, you know. Like, did dad come to the game? Yeah. Did he take an interest in growing, like, growing up? Did he remain silent driving you home from when you threw it away again, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, it's no different at the pro level. Like, a couple of weeks back, Sam Billings basically confirmed his dad flew a helicopter over a game as James <laughs> Faulkner was abusing him. Um, <laughs> it was half true. <laughs> We're probably playing. Um, so in the same vein, like I've just done a bit of digging to prepare for the Ashes, found a snippet of a piece from June 97 about your dad, um, which, <laughs> which reads, a carpet fitter who ditched his Stanley knife to carve a career in the city is now pocketing more than £8 million a year. Terry Crawley, who started life on a rough council estate, is making a pile dealing in high-risk financial markets. And the 34-year-old whiz kid has become Britain's fifth paid highest man behind rock idols Elton John, Sting, Eric Clapton and Phil Collins. Um, blah, 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 blah. He earned £100 a week fitting carpets, but now he owns a £2.25 million pound, um, estate in Kent Village. That was June 6, 1997. Don't need to name where that came from. Um, uh, Shane Warne, now this, this is the question, Shane Warne has a huge rap on you and has been talking you up uh, you know, on comms a fair bit. He also plays a fair <laughs> bit of golf with your dad, Terry, I understand. We've been doing some digging. Um, I, I guess what I'm asking is, like, do the Billingses or the Crawleys have a higher net worth, um, and do you think Warney's trying to claim a slice of the Crawley family estate? <laughs> <laughs> Just getting ready. No comment. I'm in the fifth on that one. <laughs> Is Shane there? Can we speak? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Is that a bit much? Is 
Tell us if it's too far. <laughs> it's just a bit. Um, <laughs> so, Zach, yeah, I know I said <laughs> we'll chat for 10 minutes, but uh, we we ve- we, that, that, that's all. We very much appreciate your time. Thank you for being so generous uh, with your answers and enduring all of that. And, uh, you know, because of your association with Rob Key and the runs that you've scored and the fact that you've played in Sydney and you seem to be nice about it all, um, you know, you'll be one of our favourites. We're looking forward to you coming out to the Ashes um, and seeing how that all goes. And, you know, if you need advice around um, dealing with the, the tall ones, tall runs, weird runs thing, like, please come and talk to us. But otherwise, go well. I oh, appreciate that too, boys. <laughs> Thanks.